Well, welcome to Bricks and Bytes, uh, <laughs> the show about science, Lego and digital technology. Um, really good to be with you this afternoon. Of course, we have Emma here as well today. Give us a wave, hey, Emma. Emma. So um, we're here again this afternoon to talk to you about some fun stuff. We have a special guest coming up. We have a slightly different build challenge today um, because Emma's going to be showing us something. Um, Emma, do you, want to, uh, do you want to share with us what you're going to be looking at today uh, in the app of the week? Yeah, so we're going to be learning a little bit more about animals and we're going to be building something pretty cool. It's going to be tricky. Mm, okay, <laughs> looking forward to that. All right, so as always, we start every show off with a special segment that we call uh, the Five Minute Frenzy. This is the segment where we have five minutes to build a, uh, a Lego model that you have chosen. So um, we've asked for some suggestions and we put them in our little blue cup and we're going to have a look at what's in here now. Um, Last week, Emma and I took on a turtle challenge and we saw some really cool turtles being built by people. Um, we also did a little bit of a, a challenge uh, last week where we had um, a, a device stand so you could do some stop motion animation. So we saw some great little builds of that during the week and a really nice stop motion animation um, that was shared in the group. So if you're not part of the Facebook group already, uh, ask to join and uh, you can see all the other stuff that happens behind the scenes and all the extra content that we see. So um, we'd love to see you as part of that group. But for today's five minute frenzy, uh, let's have a look. Okay, so we're going to have a look inside this cup. There's more, probably about six or so different challenges in here at the moment. Um, I'm not going to look. Actually, I'll get Emma. Emma, you. Ooh. Okay. Here we go. Can I open it? Ooh, this is a good one. A dinosaur. A, oh. You see it? Okay, it's a dinosaur <laughs> today. All right, nice. Who who From sent you the dinosaur? Michaela. Oh. It's two. Mika little two year old Michaela. Thank has you. Asked us to Michaela. Build a dinosaur. Um, now, Emma, <laughs> tell me that last week, last week, um, I thought I would try and um, pre-sort all my stuff and mm -hmm. ran out of time. You managed yep. to smash the turtle. What's your what's your strategy for this week? My strategy for this week is no strategy again. <laughs> it's jump in, start building, hope it makes sense as you go. Okay. Look for things that make sense. <laughs> I shall also do a no strategy. <laughs> strategy. Um, it's very complicated over here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, uh, how about we get the timer started? You've yes. got control of that and we're going to try ready? and build a dinosaur. Okay, let's st get started. All right, timer is on. All right, five minutes for a dinosaur. Oh my goodness. All right, let me pull up our build cameras so you can see what we're doing. All right, so that's me on the left there and Emma on the right. Um, a dinosaur. Right. Now, there's lots of different types of dinosaurs, so I guess, you know, what sort of dinosaur would you like to build? Would you build... You know, like a, a T Rex or um, a, uh, I don't know, an Apatosaurus or maybe um, an Ankylosaurus. I don't know. Good old Brachiosaurus. Brachiosaurus. I think one of those, wasn't one of those like not real? Like a dip, dip <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I don't if, know about, enough about dinosaurs. Uh, if we have any dinosaur fans in uh, the comments, can you please leave a comment and let us know if there are any dinosaurs which may have been thought as a real dinosaur but might not really be. Um, yeah. And if you have a favourite dinosaur, leave a comment below as well and, uh, and let us know what you're going to be trying to build. Now back to the builds. I haven't even started. Okay, let's do some... Now it's always this, great when you need a piece you don't have. You got to get creative. I'm going to use this piece. This is actually a um, this is a brick separator, um, but it's <laughs> we're going to use it as a as a Lego piece. Uh, okay, let's have a look. It's kind of working. I've got lots of orange, so I might use orange today. I'm going for green again. Oops. I'm just going for a green. Yeah. I might use some purple as well. Oh no. Mm. 
Mine's looking a bit like the Loch Ness monster at the moment. Oh. <laughs> That's a dinosaur, kind of. <laughs> is it is it real? If you can. <laughs> it's true. Less real. <laughs> the, the the theory is going to start coming out. All right. Um, I guess if it, if it was real, I guess it would probably be closely related to the to a dinosaur. Surely. Okay. Let's let's see. Gone sort of like a pink and orange. Now, mm-hmm. this is probably where I would have thought maybe I should have planned my parts out because now, <laughs> what, um, sort of, oh sorry everybody, I just realised I'm building off to the side here. Oh, we've got two minutes. <laughs> oh goodness, okay. yeah, we should All be right. keeping an eye okay, on that let's, time. Um, um, let's think. This one. Okay, let's use this and this. Oh. Is this looking interesting? Okay. I feel like I feel like I'm not like super far behind today. Although that said, we've only got like a minute and twenty seconds oh, left. Oh goodness! Okay. Ah. I need a longer neck. Oh, That's you, very interesting today. Are you? I don't. I haven't looked at yours. I don't know what you're doing. Oh good. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> very interesting. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. It's only got. I need to do something different here. Ah, throwing pieces. I really want to. I really want to get a mouth going. We've got fifty seconds, Emma. Oh no! Oh no! Ah! Okay. Okay. I maybe did not go fast enough this time. <laughs> the pressure. Mine's kind of like a horse dinosaur. I don't think it looks quite <laughs> like a dinosaur. It needs spikes. How do I do spikes? Oh, yeah. Stealing my ideas. No, no. <laughs> I will do no spikes. Mine. Ah, I think mine's losing the, his legs. The, I think the neck is too long on mine. Me. I don't know. Could this be the oh, first no. week? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta put it back together. Could this be the first week that I actually complete the challenge? Ooh. Oh. Okay, five seconds. Oh, my gosh. Three, two. No. One. Oh, ah! the alarm. Oh no. Stop. My, <laughs> my legs are lopsided. Mine I'm just, sneaking um, a last minute. Mine just collapsed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mine's standing. I did it. Here he is. It Can was, you see? Oh. It's a made up dinosaur. <laughs> Yours is so much better than mine because, hold on, look. Sorry, is this cheating? I just need to, I feel like I just need to. Just giving him an extra 10 seconds. Just need to, Reconnect it. It was so good before. There we go. Oh, lovely. All right. There we go. We'll make a bit of space. There's our dinos. What do you... Th- okay, in the chat, in the comments, <laughs> let us know whose dinosaur do you like? Whose yes. looks a bit wonky? <laughs> I like yours, Emma. Let's... It's... I'm just going to bring um, yours up so everyone can see it by itself. It's interesting. What's it's creative. The, are they arms? Or what are yes. Those? These are its little T-Rex arms. It's a just, T-Rex crossed just, with... A long-necked, tall dinosaur. <laughs> the tail's pretty cool. Thank you. I like the flowers on the head. That's uh, that's a nice yeah. touch. Yeah. Well, they're my spikes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's winking. I was in the winky one. All right, I'm going to switch yes. over to mine. This is, I've got a, uh, a long neck and I've used the brick separator as a tail. And uh, I've got, oh, mine's a winky one as well. Aww. There you go. And we can see. Oh, cute. Yeah. Yours is awesome. <laughs> All right. Well done. Well, how did your dinosaur go? Let, let us know how you went with your dinosaur. We'd love to see your photos. Again, join our Facebook group and pop them in there and we'll capture them or we can show them for next week. Um, and so that was our five minute frenzy. I hope you had a great blast building along with us. Now, it is time for our special guest. We have 
um, the fantastic Keeper Joe and uh, Keeper Claire joining us from Warrawong uh, Sanctuary, Wildlife Sanctuary here in South Australia. And they're going to show a couple of uh, their animals that they have at their sanctuary. So um, over to you, Keeper Joe. Thanks, Ben. And hi to all the Bricks and Bites crew. Time for some animal facts with Keeper Joe and Keeper Claire from Warrawong Wildlife Sanctuary. Yeah, I'm here with Widget. He's our Boo Book Owl here. Now, Boo Book Owls are found around pretty much all of Australia, whole of the continent. There's around 11 different subspecies, or at least there was. We have unfortunately lost around two of them, one of the more famous one being the Lord Howe Island one. Those guys there, once settlers came along, were introduced to a couple of new uh, owls, like your standard barn owl that we have across here. And unfortunately, being Australia's smallest owl, hasn't done them any favours. They're very, very cute, but yes, they were easily outcompeted on the island. Now, the rest of them, we do have here, and yes, we're hoping that those subspecies are going to be around for millennia to come. There's a few ways you can always help that as well. These guys here, very susceptible to rat baits and things like that. So we recommend if you are dealing with rodent issues around the place, try and limit how much bait that you use because you've got to think how it travels up the food chain, especially with these guys. Some of your bigger rounds, they might be able to handle a little bit, but when you're the smallest one, that's where things get a little bit rough. Yeah, mate, those fingers are pretty much clean now. <laughs> Now Widget is one of our ambassador animals here, so he's currently a little bit in training. So if he goes through a little bit of flight, a bit of a flight at some point, don't be too alarmed. We've had it happen a couple of times this morning already. He's actually doing really well right now. Now, being an owl as well, you've got to remember, right now during the day isn't exactly his prime time. They are for the most part nocturnal. They like to, instead of going hunting, wait for prey to come to them. Oh, you'll often find them perched up in a really high tree or, or up on someone's roof, just peering around, waiting for some prey to come nearby. These guys will target any of your small mammals, small lizards, things like that. Yes, pretty good, mate. <laughs> so yes, they are themselves pretty decent rodent control. So if you've got them around, try not to scare them off or anything like that. They're doing you a favor. Now we've got a couple other animals we wanted to show you today, or at least one more because I think it's only uh, a short session, but if we can get in, um, some more in next time we will. But how about we get this guy back and I'll introduce you to something scaly now. Or even better yet, I'll let Keeper Claire do it. Something scaly? No way Keeper Joe, I've got something fluffy to show you. We have Micah the ringtail possum. Say hi Micah. <laughs> so, ringtail possums they are. A smaller possum, you might have seen them running around at night time. You probably won't see them during the day unless they're unwell or unless you're finding a baby little ringtail possum. Okay, and a baby ringtail possum, it's called a joey, just like a baby kangaroo. Every baby marsupial is called a joey. We've got a really good example here of that ringtail, so they always have this white tip and they can hold onto branches, it stops them from falling out of trees. It means they're not going to be at risk of being eaten up by cats or dogs or foxes. Don't have to worry about that here though, do you Micah? Now you can see this great climbing technique that they have. They actually have extra thumps on their little paws. <laughs> and that tail acts as an extra leg as well. A little extra hand that helps them to hold on to things. We might get a close up on that box over there. Micah likes to snuggle up with his sister Opal when they're in their special little possum box. How cute are they? They even hold tails while they sleep. Oh, we love you Opal. We love you Micah. Okay, so our ringtail possums live in great little possum boxes like this and it's something that you can put up around your home, okay? Every time we cut down a tree, we're taking habitat, animal homes away from the animals that need them. So if you put something like this back up in the tree, you can pop your head in and a couple of, no you don't pop your whole head in, <laughs> dangerous. You never know what's gonna be in there, but have a little gander, see who's moved in, and um, yeah, see if you can create another home for them. So in here we have some beanies, we have some bedding. Now all of this is bedding that Mike and the possum carried in on his own. So he puts the bedding in his tail, walks along like this, makes a lovely little bed and in the wild he would have made that into a lovely circular nest called a dray. Lovely place for him to live. 
That's it from Keeper Joe and Keeper Claire. We'll see you next time. And back to you, Ben. Ooh. Play around with some stuff. Hold on. I, um, so <laughs> someone just commented, <laughs> Ben, there's no sound. I oh, know. <laughs> did the same thing, yeah. So <laughs> that mute button, I will sort that out one day. Um, we did say hello to Kai and we did say hello to Aaron. Um, but instead of waffling on anymore, I'm going to hand over to Emma <laughs> because Emma is going to talk us through the WWF Together app. Um, Sorry, I'll, I'll get that mute button sorted out soon. Okay. It's, it's a tricky button. Very, very <laughs> tricky. <laughs> All right. So we're going to follow on with our animal theme and get into this app called WWF Together. So on my trusty iPad over here, we've got the app symbol right down the bottom with the panda. So we're going to click on them and it's going to open up and play us a little intro. It's a bit cute. You might notice what they're doing here. This is something called origami. So it's a Japanese paper folding building craft and it's pretty cool. We're gonna try our own origami a bit later on, but first I'm gonna show you the app. So here we go. We just hit start down the bottom here. So all of this is sponsored by WWF, which is the World Wildlife Fund and works to keep all the endangered animals safe and keep them breeding and growing and around so that we can have them in our world forever so you'll see there's a whole lot of animals along here that we can look at so we're going to start with an elephant which is known for its intelligence so we're going to hit enter and so this is a pretty cool way to look at it so it gives you a fact straight away so we can find out that the elephants are the world's largest land animal and one of the smartest and that they show concern for other elephants and they have very complex societies. So we'll keep going. And so the way this app works is you get to scroll through a grid and then on each little section, you get to do a different thing. So this is gonna tell us some facts about elephants like the trunk that can be used as a snorkel when swimming. It can also pick up a blade of grass or rip off a whole tree branch. And it contains 150,000 mussels. So we can learn some really cool stuff about elephants. We can see how far away they are from us, which is 6,357 miles. And we can find Australia on the little globe here to see how far away it is. There we are. The elephants are all blue. We've got some cool pictures. This is another cool fact. And you find out about it by holding on to this smear section. You can uncover a cool fact about elephants kind of gross fact because they can smear their own poop around it's interesting elephants are fun <laughs> and then it's got some more facts about how they are in the wild and that kind of thing some of the threats which include habitat loss human conflict and illegal trade and then you can even watch a little video of an elephant two elephant 
babies, which is pretty cool. So you can do that with all of the animals here. And we're going to move quickly to whales because that's what we're going to build with our origami today. So the whales here are known for their greatness because whales are huge. They're like the biggest animals ever. So we can also do a whole lot of activities in here. Let's see some pictures. But what we're going to click is this little plus symbol down the bottom. So if we click on that, that'll take us out and it'll start folding a whale. So we're going to do that ourselves in a second. And I'm going to show you how. So if we click down the bottom, there's origami instructions. So if you guys want to grab a piece of paper, you can follow along with me. And I'll show you how we fold an origami whale. So how we build a whale out of just paper. All right, we'll give you, we'll give you guys a chance to go grab some paper. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just have a quick look through the comments. Yes, that <laughs> mute button got me again. <laughs> it's a tricky one. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Kai. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Chels. Good to all have you here. Tracy is having a whale of a time. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, Tracy. All right, if, you, if you've got enough paper or you've got some paper. Ben's uh, got some paper. I have He's some gonna paper. Follow I'm going to follow along. I'm actually pretty horrible at origami, so I'm going to try and follow <laughs> along as well. Um, we're going to put uh, the instructions on the screen, mm -hmm. but you'll also see Emma's hands as well. So um, hopefully you should be able to see both of these to some degree. Okay. Perfect. All right, so you need to start with a square piece of paper. So if you, like me, have a rectangle one, all you do is you fold over one of the corners to the edge of the paper and make it as straight as possible. So it's like this. And then you do, you fold it over the rectangle part so that you can cut or tear along that line and then you'll have a nice square piece of paper. So I'm gonna try my hand at tearing it. Ooh. I actually can cheat. I've got scissors. Ben doesn't. So his might not be as smooth as mine in the end. I'll have a very rustic whale. After yes. This. Well, origami, the closer it is to perfect, the better it looks. But it's always fun anyway. You get the gist of it. So here we go. We've got our nice square piece of paper. So we'll move on to the next instruction. So... If you follow along with me, we should already have this crease in there because we folded it to get a square. But if you don't, just fold it over diagonally so you've got a big triangular piece and then fold it back out so you've just got the crease because that's all we need. Then what we're going to do is we're going to fold these sides to the center. So like that. So folding the side corner into the middle. You're going to do that with both sides. How are we going, Ben? Following? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of building paper planes in primary school. Yeah, it looks a bit like a paper plane at the moment. But you're going to unfold those and do it again the other direction. Oh. So you're just making a lot of creases so that then when we fold a bit later on, you've got something to follow along with. There we go. So, you should have a whole lot of creases like this. So you should have folded in this way and in this way. Then, yes. the next part gets slightly trickier, but it's all right. We'll go slow. So these diagonal lines here, you're going to fold in and try and ignore this bit at the top for now. So... You want it to sit a bit like this. So, looks a bit weird and unfinished at the moment. It's like that. And then you're going to grab this bit and fold it down. So you're going to pinch it in the middle and fold it right down. So that it looks like this. Can you just hold it down a little bit? Like this. There we go. Yep, cool. Cool. And then you're going to do the same with the other side. So I'll go slow again. So we're folding these diagonal bits in. I can already tell you that I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we've lost Ben. No, it's all right. Keep going. You guys can jump back in the video and watch it again. Or you can get the app and follow the instructions on there. 
it does take a bit of time but there we go we've got a nice fold like so oh yeah so you've got the little flaps both fa facing the same way and the way that they're pointing up you want to fold this bit back just a little bit so it looks like this on the other side so this is what we've got so far kind of looks a bit like a bird but it will be a whale i promise so while you're doing that i'll get the next page of instructions hopefully you guys are following along if not feel free to rewind the video once it's done so now what we're going to do is we're going to hold it this way and we're going to fold the edges in just a tiny bit so just a little bit and try and keep them as symmetrical as possible so as much the same as possible so they should look a little bit like this then we're going to fold it in half along the crease down the middle so that you've got the flappy fins that we did before on the outside can you see our whale shape coming in it's kind of making a bit of sense then the little flappy fins we want to fold them down so that they stick out the bottom like whale fins ready like that so we've got two little whale fins now all our whale needs is a tail so to do the tail we grab this bit and pinch it like this and fold it up so you kind of got to crease it a bit so like can be a bit tricky this bit because you got to fold it in and up but it's all right if it's a bit of a mess there we go and so you can leave it like that or you can grab a trusty pair of scissors slice it right down there so down the middle and then fold it out and there is our whale tail oh that's really cool and ta-da we've got a little whale I hold it down just a touch there we go can we see Fins. very nice yeah so you can make all sorts of things on this app i've made a few earlier we've got a lot of <laughs> whales there these are pretty cool the turtles you can find the instructions to do them and i did try my hand at a snow leopard but that one was tricky so or a butterfly so jump on that app give it a shot it's pretty fun it can be tricky but it's pretty cool how paper can just suddenly turn into a whale very very cool emma yeah. i um mine oh, i don't know mine's not <laughs> is that that's a, not bad is that okay? it's pretty close oh. yeah it was pretty quick we had to move pretty fast <laughs> but you can slow it down and give it another shot yeah, I would definitely recommend uh, giving it a crack <laughs> a couple of times if you don't quite yeah. get it. Um, but that was good. Thanks so much, Emma. So that was a slightly different build of the day yeah. today. So that was awesome. Okay, so now next week, um, next week we are going to be talking uh, to some people from um, Code Club Australia and we're going to learn all about uh, space and a special project that's happening in a couple of weeks called Moonhack. Now, if you haven't heard of Moonhack before, we're going to be chatting a little bit about it in our Facebook group, um, but there's going to be a project and you can get involved and there's going to be kids all over Australia getting involved with uh, Moonhack. There's all different so sorts of coding projects that we'll be doing and encouraging you to do there. So again, join our Facebook group. Um, if you build any uh, origami things uh, this week uh, using the WWF Together app, uh, check that out. If you build anything, post that in our group or on our Facebook page, tag us, um, that'll be fantastic. Now, before we go, uh, we need to tell you a couple of things. One, big news. So we have, uh, being told that we can now open our libraries which is fantastic and we're looking forward to seeing people now there are some limitations though we're gonna be opening tomorrow uh, Wednesday at 930 um, but we can only have 10 people in the library at a time so we'll just have a think about that if you come along just come and grab a book come and say hi we'd love to see you but we can only have 10 people in the library at a time so we'll have to make sure everyone has a chance to have a go other big news is that Bricks and Bytes is going to be moving to Mondays. Now that we're open again, um, we'll be able to spread our schedule out a bit with our recording 
and we're going to be moving to Monday. So we'll be here at 3.45 next Monday afternoon and we uh, hope to see you there and you can learn all about Moonhack and, uh, and a little bit more about what's happening at the City of Marion Library. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week. See you later. Bye.